Hey, what is going on everyone? Jason here Waddle, and welcome back to another college tier list video. So my freshman year, I took 15 classes, and in the last video, I rated all 15 of them. In terms of how much I enjoyed the class and how useful it was to me, and now this year, we're basically just going to add to the list and continue on from where we left off. Now one important thing to note about these rankings is that I am not taking into account the grade that I got for these classes when I put them onto my ranking list, so I won't be putting grade as a consideration for these tier lists. But yeah, without further ado, let's continue on with our tier list. So starting with the first class that I took during my sophomore year, it's a continuation of introductory to biology that I took in my freshman year, and that is Life Science 7B. I took this class my fall quarter with Professor K, and everything on there was online. Attendance for this class was mandatory, so if a lecture was going on at 2 p.m., I would still have to log on to Zoom at 2 p.m. to attend the lecture. This section of the class mainly focused on like genetics and ecology, and the stuff I learned in this class was definitely not as useful compared to some other classes that I've had. And that might just only be because of my major. I'm a neuroscience major, so what I learned in 7B has basically no real applications besides for maybe taking the MCAT with it. So I'm gonna put 7B actually in the solid category. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Second class that I took during fall quarter is Life Science 192. This was my first ever upper division class here at UCLA. However, at the same time, it is a really easy class in terms of upper division. Life Science 192 is the class that you enroll in if you want to be a learning assistant or LA. Being a learning assistant at UCLA, you're mainly responsible for basically helping with teaching assistants throughout different introductory courses. So for Life Science 192, I actually went out to help my former teacher, Professor Malloy, in teaching in his Life Science 7A class basically just two quarters after learning the material myself. It was definitely a really rewarding experience in being a learning assistant. I can go on and on with another video just to talk about why I became a learning assistant for that quarter and the things that I learned in running and teaching a college course. The workload of it was not as intensive either, so I was able to manage this pretty well. Overall, I'm gonna put Life Science 192 actually in the legendary category just because I had a lot of fun in this class and I feel like I've definitely learned a lot of lifelong skills just in this class. Next class on the list is Physics 5B, and this class is mainly about optics, waves, and fluids, but taught in a very simplified manner for the undergrads in the pre-med track. So my teacher for this class was Dr. Bauer, and he actually was the same teacher that I had for Physics 5A, which is actually just mechanics. But for this class, the concepts of 5B is a lot harder than Physics 5A. But maybe at the same time, this is because it's my first ever attempt at the material that I'm learning. I had to go through my progression and learning, do a lot more problems to figure things out, and be able to have a good understanding in a lot of things just to understand the class. Out of all the classes that I took during my fall quarter, this class definitely was the one I put the most effort in. And at the end, you know, I think I definitely was supposed to put in that amount of effort because I was able to learn a bunch of concepts that I knew absolutely nothing about. So for that, I'm actually going to be putting Physics 5B in the solid category in front of Chem 14C. Just because Chem 14C, I feel like I had some foundation going into it, whereas in Physics 5B, I've had less of a foundation, so I was able to learn more. And the final class that I took my full quarter at UCLA was Physics 5C. And this class was just your electricity and magnetism class for your life science majors. Once again, in high school, I did take AP Physics C, electricity and magnetism. So everything that was covered in Physics 5C, I've already been through it once. So a lot of my time during this class was just reading the lecture slides instead of going to the lectures itself. Just recollect my memories and be able to eventually come up with the right answer. I would say this class definitely belongs in the forgettable category just because it was my second attempt at the same content. And yeah, I mainly took this class just because it was a requirement and AP Physics C couldn't wait me out of it. So in the winter quarter, things definitely got more intense because I was still taking four science classes. One of the hardest classes that I've taken was Chem 14D. This class was pretty much Chem 14C, but way harder because it goes into the details of organic chemistry. There was a lot of memorization for this class. The pace of this class was very fast. I did have an amazing professor in which me and my friends actually like had to create a TikTok as a part of an extra credit project. 
it wasn't that good either. We didn't win the TikTok contest that they had, but definitely this class was for sure enjoyable to be a part of. And overall, I'm just very glad that I was able to survive through this class, honestly. This class is legendary. Next class on the list that I have is Life Science 23L, or the lab portion of the biology course. Now this class during the times of COVID was very, very different than what was supposed to happen in person. Instead of being able to see how a wet lab works, instead we're just prompted with a bunch of virtual labs that we had to just complete worksheets on. I took this class with Professor Flugel and honestly, his lectures were pretty pointless and redundant from what you were supposed to do anyways. So honestly, I'm gonna put this class in regrettable, but it's going to be like my least regretted class, I think. And the only reason it is there is because I regret that this class had to have happened during the period of COVID. I think it would have been a way better experience in person. Sadly, because of COVID, that wasn't possible. And luckily for me, I still have had experience working in a wet lab before. But still, it just really sucks that I had to have taken this class online just to satisfy a prereq and I can continue on with my major and still graduate on time. Next class that I took in the winter quarter was Life Science 7C. So the final introductory to biology course, but unlike the other two classes, I would say it is a lot more forgettable. So I think it is more forgettable than basically everything except for 5C. Again, with COVID, I never really got to interact much with my professors, and cause for some reason, 7C in my opinion, probably like the easiest class to understand, so I didn't really need a lot of help for this class. Final class that I took during winter 2021 was Physics 192. So just like Life Science 192, how I was a learning assistant for a Life Science course, Physics 192, you guessed it, I was a learning assistant for Physics 5C. So I helped out Professor Mills, which was the professor that I took Physics 5C with. So I had to answer a lot of physics questions that students have had by just coming into my own office hours. This experience and being in LA for my winter quarter was, was definitely also very fun just because this was the first time I had to host office hours and there was a lot less learning assistance in Physics 5C so I got to know more people as a result of that. This was my second time around being a learning assistant so I didn't really get to learn as many new things, it was more just practice. So because of that, I think this class can only be in like the great tier. And now we move into spring quarter of 2021. Spring quarter was the first time this year in which I took three classes instead of four classes during the quarter. One of the main courses that I took in the spring was Chem 153A, also known as biochemistry. From what I remember of this class was that the content was not that hard just because over COVID, a lot less emphasis was placed on memorization. So for this class, I didn't have to memorize a lot of like the things that I'm supposed to memorize for this class. But instead, all of the quizzes and stuff were purely free response. So I had to be able to know the concepts pretty well just by looking at like diagrams. The only issue of that is that if I didn't have to try really hard and memorizing something, I will forget it. And as a result, Chem 153A should go into forgettable. I'm gonna have so much fun relearning all of biochemistry when I get ready and prepare for the MCAT. Life Science 107, or the Pure Genetics course here at UCLA. I technically didn't even need this class as a neuroscience major, but I just thought it was interesting enough for me to take it. However, that being said, it is also pretty forgettable. Just because the material felt rushed to me, and I wasn't able to fully dive into like the course content as well as I wish I could. Final class that I had during the spring quarter was I was also in LA again for physics. This time it's in LA for a different professor, Professor McQueen. But you know, I still think this class is a very solid class in terms of being able to be in LA. Once again, not as fun as the previous two quarters of me LA. Just because by this time, students were definitely 100% burnt out from online learning. I didn't feel as engaged with the students that I was teaching, and neither were them. And that is technically the end of the school year, except I decided it was a good idea to take three more summer courses as I moved back into LA, just so I could finish all of the GEs that were required of me, and be able to have a somewhat meaningful and productive summer during COVID as things were slowly getting back into the swing of things. And the first class I'll talk about is Film TV 4. I mainly took this GE just because, you know, I'm making a YouTube video, so 
I know quite a bit about like cinematography and like film stuff, so I thought this would be a pretty easy A if I do take it, and it would knock out a general education requirement. And I was only partially right. While they did talk about cinematography for one portion of the class, another more significant portion that they spent a lot of time talking about was about film history and all of the film genres that, you know, I had like no experience about. Still, I think this is a solid class. I'm gonna put it in the solid category right in the middle, just because I was able to get through this junior class pretty smoothly, learn a lot of interesting things, and I didn't really have to write any papers about anything, and I only had to do discussion forums every week. Next class I'll talk about is probably the beefiest class that I've taken at UCLA yet. And that right there is Neuroscience 102, also known as Neuroanatomy. This class, by far, was the fastest class that I've taken at UCLA, by far the one that covered the most content at UCLA, and the one class that I had to spend the most time here at UCLA. Oh, and it's also my first ever neuroscience class that I had to take as a neuroscience major. I'm really glad I took this class over the summer though, because if I didn't, I would be literally taking this class with another neuroscience class at the same time right now. And I'm glad that I did not have to do that. Barring all of that, I still feel like I've learned a lot of information, and that information definitely has carried over to my current class right now that I'm taking. So I would actually put this class in the great category, because it is a great introductory to neuroscience, I think it is pretty beneficial to what I'm learning about. And taking it in the summer was just a good opportunity to knock that requirement down. And final class that I've taken. I just kind of took this class for fun just because I thought it was something interesting that I wanted to try out during my summer. And that is Psychiatry 175 or a class that is solely based upon meditation. I won't really bore you on the details about why you should meditate. I think that's something that you should definitely look into if you're interested in it. If not, that's totally fine. But yeah, I also took this class while COVID was coming to a close, basically. Just to be able to also reflect on my time during the past year. This class also definitely held me in check just to take care of my mental health. So this class will be going in to the legendary category, right behind Camp 14D. But yeah, that is how my tier list looks after two years of classes here at UCLA. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful, and if you did in any way, shape, or form, feel free to leave a like on this video. But yeah, other than that, I want to wish you guys all a wild day, and we'll see you in another video. Peace.